Okay, we'll just uh, sit down. George, I put a pen down here somewhere. See if you got it. Right? Well, welcome back to Detroit, or I should say Pontiac, Michigan. This is Joe Starkey with George Logan. We're at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan on a rainy afternoon, but of course it's nice and warm and dry inside. It's a even 72 degrees with a constant wind of about three miles per hour. And a crowd on hand this afternoon set to watch the expansion Detroit Express try to slow down the express train of the San Diego Sockers off to a great start at 4-0 on the year. Let's give you the starting lineups. First of all, we will give you the San Diego Sockers, and of course the coach, Hubert Vogel, Singer will find anybody that breaks the rules, as if you've read the papers earlier this week. Alan Mayer will be in goal again this afternoon. He'll be wearing a special helmet, by the way, because of concussions he suffered. The defenders will be number four, Peter Lakerman, number seven, Jan Vanderveen, who has been a midfielder so far this season, number 10, Peter Nover, and number 13, Axel Neumann. Those are the defenders for the San Diego Sockers. There's a look at the referee here this afternoon. Now the midfielders for today's game for the Sockers will be Franz Krauthausen, number 17. Julie V will be uh, a midfielder also, number 22. And Peter Anderson will be the a center midfielder, number 9. Anderson has been moved from a forward spot back to a midfield role. Up forward, it'll be Gene Wilrich, Jerry Ingram, and John Newsom. That's the San Diego soccer lineup. Now for the Detroit Express which is the home team and playing its second home game in its history. The coach is Ken Furphy, whose son is in the starting lineup, by the way. The goalkeeper, Steve Hardwick. On defense, the defenders will be Paul Hunter, number two, Eddie Calhoun, number four, Steve Sargent, number six, and Ian Davies, number three. The midfielders will be Angus Moffat, number 12, David Bradford, number 10, and Mick Leach, number seven. He's usually a forward. And up front will be Steve Earle, number 11, Graham Oates, number five, and Keith Furphy, number eight, and we're ready to go. In the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, the home of the Detroit Lions, a magnificent stadium seating 80,000. The kickoff goes to the Sockers. Jan Vanderveen gets it up the middle to Krauthausen. Krauthausen across the halfway line, brings it over to the right wing, drops it back to Lakerman. Lakerman starts to bring it up. It's blocked right at the halfway line and taken away by Oates. Oates usually a defender, but playing up forward now, up the left wing to the corner of the penalty area. Overrides the ball, comes back, control there, and trying to get into the corner is Furphy. Furphy ridden off by Lakerman. Lakerman trying to keep it in bounds and does, keeping it from going across the goal line. And here come the Sockers back up. Harshani, Harshani with a lead kick goes up to Anderson. Anderson drops back. Anderson playing in the middle today. This is the change of strategy for Vogelsinger. Quite a different lineup for the Sockers today. We're just underway. Krauthausen going for a header, couldn't get it. Now Julie V up the left wing side to Woolrich, but it's blocked away on a high kick. I would say that that would be... Uh, um, a free kick, an indirect kick on that one because in effect it was uh, uh, unsportsmanlike, you could call it. Uh, he got his kick up too high on the air, and so it'll be an indirect free kick right now for the soccer. Somebody else will have to touch the ball, of course, before it can go into the net. John Newsom approaches the ball, puts it into the penalty area. Header cleared out by Detroit on our simulcast on KOGO and XETV. Now the ball controlled by Detroit. The Detroit Express, who had 28,000 people here, believe it or not, last week in their opener. That's a tremendous crowd. That goes back to the goalkeeper and controlled by Detroit. A long kick down inside the 35-yard line of San Diego. 
A reverse over the head kick comes back to Mayer, and Mayer jumps in front of the attacker on the play, Oates, and takes the ball, and he'll clear it out. Mayer, you see, wearing a helmet. On the left wing, trying to bring it out, Peter Nover. Long kick across the halfway line, gets it up to Wilrich, heads it back, and gain it up the left side is Anderson. Anderson across the 35-yard line. Starts to bring it up, drops back to the 35-yard line, almost back to the midway line. Told by Krauthausen. Krauthausen over to the right wing side to Harshani. Harshani, a defender for the Sackers. The leading team in the league right now, 4-0. Now Julie B, a good chest trap, goes in deep. He's going to shoot. He puts it up in the air. A good block comes back to Julie again. Heads it. They put it up and almost in. A good save by the goalkeeper on the play, Steve Hardwick. Again, though, the offensive thrust of the San Diego Sockers, a very aggressive soccer team. They lead the league in goals scored with 10 after four games. Now bringing it back out, the goalkeeper, Bradford, or Hardwick, sends it way up to the 35-yard line of San Diego. A good header up the left wing side. Looking for Furphy a little bit too far. The pass from Steve Earl, who has been hampered by injuries as well. Earl has been slowed by a thigh muscle strain and missed a game, but he's a hard-shooting right winger for this team. He's British from Leicester City. Now a goal kick, and it'll be taken by Peter Nover. Nover at 6-5, a tremendous advantage on the back line for the San Diego Sockers. Now the ball up across the halfway line. Headed back and controlled to the halfway line by Krauthausen. Drop back into the middle, bringing it up as Vanderveen. Vanderveen back over to Newsom. Newsom from Bermuda and the Philadelphia College of the Textiles. Gets it back up to Krauthausen, doing some good traps off the knees. Gets it into the middle, and the Sockers start to bring it up the right wing. Over to Lakerman, a little bit behind him, but he stops it at the 35-yard line. Traps it off his knee, gives it back to Julie V. V tries to center it on a through pass, but it doesn't go. Taken away by Anderson. Anderson over to Lakerman, drops it back to Julie V. V goes through two defenders, a nice move, still in control, dribbling beautifully. Up the right wing, has a man in the penalty area, and finally ridden off the ball. In fact, almost pushed off the ball by Dave Bradford. Brad for the fourth leading scorer right now in the conference. Now the ball controlled by Mick Leach. Mick Leach has also been out with injuries. He's been hurting as well. He's had a, a calf muscle problem. Down the left wing, controlled by Detroit. Detroit up the left side to Furphy. He's the coach's son, by the way, just 19 years of age, in fact. Now into the middle of the Leach. Leach starts to move toward the 35-yard line of San Diego. It's blocked away and comes back across the 35-yard line. Over to the far right wing. Detroit trying to bring it into the goal area. And oh, falling down on the play. And a good chance, uh, in fact, uh, but they just couldn't control the ball that time was Steve Earle. Now the ball up the middle to Novers. He starts an overlap. Drop back past Julie V. Goes all the way back to Alan Mayer. Mayer in the penalty area. Gets it up to Harshani. Laszlo Harshani. Harshani, an excellent defender for the Sockers. This is a fine, fine coordinated team. You can't say that's a team of great superstars, but boy, do they work together as a unit with 4-0 on the season right now. And the ball goes across the touchline, and it's a free kick, in fact. There was a foul on the play, and so it'll be a free kick for San Diego. It'll be taken by Vanderveen. Remember to call now, 280-GOAL, 280-GOAL. The box office window is now open if you're in the neighborhood to pick up some tickets, but you can call the Sockers right now and look for tickets. Here's a header by the Sockers heading out of bounds across the touchline. Nice try by Anderson, George. Yeah, goalkeeper never took any chances there, Joey. Just came out, punched the ball, didn't try to clutch. Now they try to center it into the penalty area. It comes back out to Krauthausen. Goes chest trap, goes in across the penalty area to the left wing side. And they try to put it in the middle, but we have a whistle for an offside play. Offside against San Diego. And so it'll be brought back out by the Detroit Express, Steve Hardwick. This should be a... A clash of the Giants up front here with Oates at six foot two and of course Peter Nova at six foot five. It'll be interesting to see the tactics, but I imagine we'll see a lot of aerial bombardments into the San Diego goal today. Well, that's a move certainly by Detroit to try to counter the defense of the uh, Sockers with a guy like Oates who normally plays on the back line, a defender himself, but they've moved him up to forward because of six five Nova and six three Harshani. Now it goes to Wilrich. He couldn't get it. Controlled and taken away by Ian Davies. Ian Davies shoots it to the 35-yard line, drops back, takes a come-and-go pass over to the right wing side, and now Detroit trying to bring it up. An expansion team. They try a long pass, and it's taken by Alan Mayer. Just takes it outside the goal area and asks his players to funnel back up. Says, go on, guys, get downfield, because I'm going to pound it. And instead just sends over to the near side to Harshani. Harshani brings it up the right side. Laszlo. Drops it back in the middle of Peter Nova, right at the penalty arc of San Diego. In the first half, San Diego is going from left to right, and we're just underway, really. We've got 38 minutes to go in the first half. Ball almost stolen away by Detroit, but it's a foul on Detroit as they uh, 
apparently are guilty of uh, kicking one of the San Diego players, so that's a direct kick, but that far out of the field or out of the halfway line doesn't make any difference. Nover up to left wing, tries a lead to Newsom, but it goes much too far, and across the touch lines, so it'll be a throw in by San Diego. Paul Hunter will throw it in for the, or by, I should say, by Detroit. Detroit Express will throw it in. Bright orange uniforms with black trim. They'd be a great hit on Halloween, these guys. And the ball will be thrown in by Steve Bradford, the Steve Hardwick, the goalkeeper. Over the left wing side of Davies. Davies starts to move up. Jerry Ingram picks him up at the 35-yard line of Detroit. A long volley. Stopped at the 35-yard line and a foot trap. Controlled there by Earl. Earl gets it over to the right wing. Over to Bradford. Bradford over to the far right wing side. They try a centering pass and a header blocked away. Comes back from Vanderveen over the left side to Furphy. Furphy can't get it. Lakerman chasing it down into the near corner. Picked up almost by Davies. Davies couldn't reach it. Mayer chasing the ball. Comes way out of the goal. But it goes across the goal line. And it's going to be a goal kick for San Diego. Joe, I was down at field level yesterday. The field is rather bumpy where the, the seams, you know, the seams run across the field. And it is a bit bumpy there. So they better be very careful in playing the ball back to the goalkeeper. The Sockers are 4-0 are on the year, and it doesn't seem to make any difference what kind of surface they play on because they've won both their road games on this type of surface, an AstroTurf-type surface. Julie V at the near touch line, at his own 35-yard line, lost it to Earl, kicked away by Harshani, comes back to Furphy. Furphy trying to beat Wilrich, fires it back to the left wing to Davies just inside the 35-yard line. Detroit, not many men in the goal area. The penalty area is stolen away on a beautiful sliding tackle by Julie V. B puts it in the middle over to Vanderveen. Vanderveen dropping back to his own 35-yard line. Newsom to his left, and he feeds it over to him on an easy push pass. Now Newsom brings it up toward the halfway line. Fires it up across to Ingram. Ingram backing up for it. Jerry, an outstanding forward for this San Diego team. Couple of years with the Washington Diplomats. High scoring forward. Krauthausen tries to give a go back to Ingram, but it's intercepted by Detroit, and they send it back out across their own 35-yard line. Up to Furphy. Murphy's won a game this year with a goal, 2-1 to one a couple of weeks ago against uh, Fort Lauderdale. Up the left wing side, good trap off the knee by Davies. Davies to the 35-yard line. Lakerman trips him, he'll be called. It'll be a direct kick for Detroit, a tripping foul on Peter Lakerman, and it'll come just outside the 35-yard line. That's pretty deep, and I wouldn't imagine they'd have to set too big a wall with that uh, kind of a distance, George. It's kind of far out. Yeah, they'll probably just go for the chip ball here. So let's see how Detroit uh, plays it. Ian Davies will take the kick. He's British. He's just 21 years of age from the Norwich City of English First Division team. Davies approaches the ball, kicks it right in to the penalty area, and Nover with a big size forces it out off a header, and it goes back out deeper into the penalty area. Coming back to pick it up. Control there by Steve Sargent. Sargent feeds it in. They got an open man, a close in pass, a give and go, a shot clock by Harsh Johnny on a nice play. High up in the air, it goes off of Wilrich. A header by Vanderveen, and he put his hands on one of the Detroit players, but they're going to call the foul on Detroit. A direct kick for San Diego, the foul against Detroit. Good move there by Detroit. The quick back heel, of course, deceives the defense going one way. The ball is chased, that changed the other way. Good play there by Detroit. Now Peter Nover over to Harshani. Back to Peter. Big Peter Nover starts to bring it up. Nover, long kick, looking for Ingram on a high, long volley, but it's headed away by Detroit. Detroit has it inside its own 35-yard line. Paul Hunter stolen by Julie V. V can't keep it. Now Woolrich comes in on the play, trying to get the ball, and Detroit has to drop it back to their goalkeeper, Steve Hardwick. Back up the left wing side, bringing it out is Dave Bradford. Bradford, 24 years of age, from Britain. In fact, he's been a pro since the age of 16. Here's a long kick and a chest trap by Nover. Nover just outside his own penalty area. Good pass over to Harshani off the left foot. Gets it over to Laszlo on the right wing. Across the halfway line. Leads a pass for Julie V. V is tackled off the ball by Detroit. I thought they might have called a foul, but they didn't. Over to the left wing side. Controlled by Furphy. Keith Furphy, 19 years of age. Brings it up, moving on Peter Lakerman. Tries a lead pass. Vanderveen blocks it. It's stolen back. Here's Murphy in deep. He shoots, but got nothing on it. And Alan Mayer makes the save at the side of the goal. So right now, with 10 minutes gone of the game, there is no score, and we'll be right back. Well, maybe we wouldn't be able to. At least we would, though, wouldn't we? If you can hear me, they'd like a super on that uh, phone number.
Peter Anderson with the ball for San Diego. Joe Starkey and George Logan on our simulcast. Up the left wing side. Control by the Sockers. No score in the first half. Played just 12 minutes so far. Ball is dropped back to Anderson. Planted midfielder. A long left wing pass. Goes to Newsom. Tries a header. Puts it into the goal there, the penalty area. But it comes back out. And up coming on the right side is Eddie Calhoun. Calhoun, a very physical player, leads a pass, takes it back on the right wing, and the Sockers force it out of bounds off of Vanderveen. It'll be thrown in now by the Detroit Express. They're 2-1 and one on the year. The ball comes back outside the 35-yard line into Bradford. Bradford taking his time, starts to dribble it, gets it up the right wing side, controlled by Detroit, looking for an open man in the, in the penalty area, and getting in very close, trying to get the shot away, controlled by Earl. Earl back in the middle of Bradford. He drills it, and Alan Mayer makes the save. Don't forget, Wednesday night, the Sockers are home to Houston. And Saturday night, the Portland Timbers, which was one of the best games of the year, a tremendous thriller last week in Portland, a rematch next Saturday night. Hope you'll be out there. And if you'd like tickets, give them a call right now, 280-GOAL, 280-G-O-A-L. There are people on the lines right now at San Diego Stadium waiting for your calls. Watch the excitement of this outstanding soccer club in San Diego. Now the ball at midfield, controlled there by Furphy. Furphy over to the right wing side, still at the halfway line, and dropped back to Bradford. Bradford over the right wing, gets it into Moffat. Moffat tries a long pass and a volley, and it's taken off the head of Nover. Nover gets it back to Vanderveen. Vanderveen, left wing side, moving up left to right, gives it to Newsom. Newsom just inside the touch line, fires it up the left side for Ingram. Ingram in a foot race inside the 35 yard line of Detroit, but Detroit just drops the ball back on defense as it's cleared back in by the uh, defender on the play, Steve Sargent. Sargent. Sargent is playing where he is today only because of an injury also. They've got him back as a defender, as a center back. Normally he's up front, but he's been hurting from an injury. Here's a long pass and the soccer is substantially offside. So it'll be just thrown back out by Steve Hardwick. No score in the first half, 30 minutes remaining. And we will be right back after this message. We're back in Pontiac, Michigan. No score in the first half. Joe Starkey and George Logan, 29 and a half minutes remaining. The ball at midfield. A header blocked away and out of bounds by Krauthausen, I believe. No, they're going to say it went off the Detroit player, so the throw-in will go from John Newsom. Newsom just to his side of the halfway line. Gets up to Krauthausen. Makes a trap off the ankle. Gets it back to Newsom. Newsom over to Krauthausen. Puts it into the middle, and now the Sockers is on the move at the halfway line. Over to the right side to Vanderveen. Vanderveen starts to bring it up the right wing. Has Lakerman way ahead of him. Starts to dribble it up himself, though. Leads it into Lakerman. Lakerman leads it for Wilrich, and they will call a foul. They're going to call a pushing foul. In fact, practically a punching foul from the uh, sign by the official, and it'll be against San Diego. Direct kick for the Detroit Express. In fact, Furphy was hurt on that play, George, and he's a key man in this lineup. One of the surprises of the year, uh, the coach's son, as you mentioned, 19 years old, played non-league soccer over in England with Wealdstone. Now, he has been something for his age. He played with the Cosmos Reserve team at the age of 17 two years ago. And so the referee has called a timeout so they could work on him right now. So let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back.
Peter Anderson into the penalty area. Left wing pass. Woolwich is up and he shoots. Oh, and he just missed. He had the goalkeeper beaten. Steve Hardwick broke in on the left wing. Detroit is yelling that it should have been offside. And for a second, I thought it might have been. But there was no call. And Woolridge took the shot just wide. Yeah, beautiful through pass here to Woolridge. Possibly should have gone to the right post, the right-hand post there, Joey. Didn't have too much space to move to the left. Yeah, a lot of room to the other side. But went for the short side, the near post. And it just slithered wide. So now Steve Hardwick. From the long goal kick, gets it across the halfway line. And it looks like it's going to go to bounds, and it will. And so Krauthausen will throw it in just about the halfway line, far side of the field. San Diego going left to right in the first half. No score, 27 minutes remaining. Houston in town on Wednesday night. Portland next Saturday night. Call now at 2-8-0 goal. Right wing side to Lakerman. Lakerman brings it up across the 35-yard line. He's being shoved off the ball on that play by Mickey Leach, and it'll be an indirect kick for an obstruction on the play. And so a free kick coming up for the Sockers. On the road, of course, we're in the blue uniforms with the gold trim. So the kick will be taken by Julie V. V puts it right into the penalty area. They go for the header. Comes over to the right wing side. In close is Anderson, who kicked a little bit too high. And they're going to call him for it. Indirect kick. And so Detroit will send it back out. The Detroit Express will take the kick from just inside their penalty area. Goes back to the goalkeeper, Steve Hardwick. One of the big favorites coming into San Diego with Houston and, and Wednesday night is Bobby Lennox, who played with the Scottish national team a number of years, played with a great Celtic team. Getting free on the left wing now, a chance for Mickey Leach. Leach feeds it into the penalty area. A header by Detroit, cleared away by Harshani. Gets it a good chest trap and an over-the-head scissors kick by Vanderveen. Great play to get it out to midfield. But now they're going to call a foul on the play. And the foul apparently is going to be against Detroit again. It looked to me perhaps uh, Julie could have been called in for dangerous play, but I think there was a handball just prior to that, Joe. Yep, they gave a signal for the hand uh, touching the ball, and so the Sockers have the ball and drop it back to Alan Mayer. Now you're the goalkeeper wearing a helmet today because he's now had eight concussions in his young career. And, of course, uh, you didn't want to see that keep happening as that could become a dangerous problem. John Newsom, a header back to Woolrich. Woolrich, the North American Soccer League Player of the Week last week for his sensational performance against Portland when he scored two goals which we uh, insisted on all night, but they didn't put in the officials court until after the game. And so now we have a foul call. Free kick for San Diego. It's against the Detroit Express. So Detroit has been picking up a lot of fouls here in the first half, while the Sockers to set up a lot of free kicks. Newsom just inside the 35-yard line. Looks like he'll take it. John Newsom, the rookie, and puts it right into the penalty area. A header by Ingram, but it comes back out for the penalty arc. Put up in the air by Detroit. Good chest trap, but Krauthausen couldn't keep it. Fed back and fired back up, though, by Vanderveen. Vanderveen puts up a high kick. And we have another foul call. This time, though, uh, no offside against San Diego this time. Yeah, defense moved out very quickly. And, of course, our forward was just a little slow in recovering. And uh, the ball was chipped in offside. Steve Sargent, a long volley. Harshani going up high with Davis. Comes back over to Oates. Over to the left wing side. Taking it back is Leach. Leach trying to get free at the corner of the goal area. Feeds it in. Newsom with a good header to clear it out as an attacker. Oates was right out in front of the goal area. That six-yard box. Comes back to the far side right at the touch line. Stays in bounds, though. Detroit holds it in. And it goes out of bounds across the goal line. And they're going to call a corner kick, though. It was last touched, apparently, by the Sockers. So Keith Furphy, the 19-year-old rookie, will take the corner kick from the far side. He's a left-footed kicker. Julie V starts to move up on him. They put it into the penalty area. A header tried by Oates. Oates gets it at the left wing corner of the penalty area. He's forced off the ball, and it goes across the goal line. And this time they're going to call the goal kick and say that it was touched last by Graham Oates. So with the score, 0-0 and 23 minutes remaining to the first half, we'll pause for this.
All right, we're back in Pontiac, Michigan. No score in the first half, 22.51 to go. The Sockers will be home on Wednesday night to start a long homestand. Wednesday, Houston, Saturday night, Portland. Tickets available right now and ticket information, 280 goal. Give him a call. John Newsom, left wing side of his own goal area, almost into the corner at the corner kick spot and forced out of bounds. And a corner kick coming up now. It's forced out of bounds by San Diego. And the Express will get a corner kick, and Furphy will take it. Again, there'll be a left-footed kicker. Mayer is playing at the far post. Newsom lines up at the near post. Right in front of him is Steve Earle. He's surrounded by Vanderveen and Newsom. The ball comes in, and they miss the header. Goes the Davies, goes for the far post, and nobody there to help. A great opportunity for Detroit. And Earl, for some reason, stood there and watched the ball, apparently figuring it was going to get in the corner anyhow, George. He should have been after that. All it needed was a touch there. Good volley by number six, number five, and uh, all it needed was a touch there. Great opportunity for Detroit, and they let it get away, so the Sockers say thank you very much and send it back up to the halfway line. Goes up the left wing side. Controlled by Hunter. Hunter over to the chest trap to Bradford. Bradford drops it back to the halfway line, looking for some space, see if he can find some room to bring it up. Drops it back even deeper. Now a long volley, taken off the head on the left wing side from Oates. Oates gets it over to Furphy, tries to shoot, and it's forced off the leg of Furphy, and goes across the goal line where Peter Lakerman. No, oh, they're gonna call a corner kick. Lakerman at least did a great job of acting. Anyhow, he made everybody in the building for a moment think that the Sockers were gonna get the ball, except the referee. He didn't buy it. Bradford gonna take the kick here, Joe. Five foot five tall, so here's a good thing for the, the little kid. Bradford puts it in, right in front of that. Now goes to the far side. They try a header. It comes back out and controlled by Krauthausen. Krauthausen up the right wing side, and the Sockers have got some space now up at the halfway line. Nice heel kick by Julie V. Can't hold it. Bradford takes it away. Comes back to Ian Davis. Davis sends it up the right side. Into the middle. Controlled now by Detroit. Detroit's Furphy can't hold it. Lakerman gets it. Lakerman up the right wing side to to Vanderveen. Vanderveen leads it into V. V trying to get it back over to Jan, over to the right side, but it's blocked away by Detroit. But Detroit Express, a good feed into the middle, taken there, and in control. Detroit has it, starting to bring it back up. Mickey Leach, over to the far side. Eddie Calhoun. Eddie Calhoun drops it back over the left side to Furphy. Murphy inside the 35-yard line, a deep feed into the corner, goes to Davis. Davis, a good move on V, getting free, drops it back to Furphy. He has to go deep for it, though, and it comes back out to Leach. Leach puts a high one up. They're looking for a header. Newsom trying to protect, and he does, and he forces it over to the far side, right practically at the goal line. Good trap off of Sandy, off of Detroit, and they're going to call a foul, though, I believe, against Detroit for the high kick. Now here again is a, a point, the referee should have allowed play to go there because it was to San Diego's advantage. However, he stopped play, the whole game stops more or less and uh, San Diego really have no advantage 10 yards from their own goal line. The advantage rule in uh, soccer in effect means that if you've got the ball and you've been fouled, you should be allowed to keep the play going. And that's uh, about three or four times already this season we've seen that where that rule has not been applied by a referee. Now John Newsom at the halfway line over to Anderson. Anderson, of course, uh, still basking in the glory of that first game when he had that hat trick for San Diego in the opening game of the year. Trying to find some space. Leads a pass up to Ingram. Ingram trying to go through two defenders, but the defense wins the race for the ball, and Eddie Calhoun drops it back to goalkeeper Steve Hardwick. Hardwick just inside the penalty arc with 19 minutes to go in the first half and no score. Sockers have had the better scoring opportunities, but no goal. Long kick. Newsom, a header way back upfield. Goes inside the 35-yard line of Detroit. Express has it. Feed it up the middle of Bradford. Bradford ridden off by Vanderveen on a nice tackle. Comes back into the 35-yard line of Detroit. The Express has it. They're going from right to left in the first half. No score. Good crowd on hand here, considering the competition this team has to face today. We said they had 28,000 in their opener last week. Incredible crowd. All sorts of kids in pre-game uh, soccer uh, shows uh, with children. Four or 5,000 in a march before the game to show just how many soccer players there are in the Detroit area. Ball inside the 35-yard line. They try a lead up to Leach. Leach is in deep. He goes high for the kick and puts it up high and slow. And Alan Mayer coming outside of the goal box. Grabs the ball. Mayer, one of the top keepers in the game. No question about it. A couple of good, very good American goalkeepers in this game, in fact, right now. Mayer probably the best. Guy in Colorado, Arnie Mauser, rated pretty high as well. Back to Peter Nover. Nover just outside his own penalty area. Gets it up the middle across the 35-yard line. Vanderveen. 
Van Der Veen over to the near side, over to Harshani. Harshani starts to bring it up, right wing side to Lakerman across the halfway line, feeds it into the middle. Van Der Veen starts to bring it up, has Julie V ahead of him. V makes a trap. Heel kicks it back, trying to give it back to Van Der Veen. Tackles the ball away as Detroit steals it briefly. Julie V, and they're going to call a foul. On, uh, they're going well now. Again, we've got the play going on the advantage rule, so they keep it going. Anderson drops it back to Vanderveen. Vanderveen outside the 35-yard line, left wing to Newsom. Had a lot of space over there. Makes a chest trap. Tries to put it right into the goal area. Kicks it a little bit too high and too far. Goes across the goal and out of bounds. And so with 17:32 remaining in the first half, there is no score, and we'll be right back. We're back in Pontiac, Michigan. No score in the first half on our simulcast, XCTV and KOGO Radio in San Diego. Home Wednesday night against Houston and Saturday night against Portland. Now the ball just outside the goal area, the penalty area of San Diego. And we're getting a uh, call here for a, uh, I guess, I don't think it was offside. Must have been a foul. And the ball coming back all the way to Alan Mayer. He just throws it up toward the halfway line. Knocked down by Bradford. Bradford goes high to knock the ball down. And uh, they call a foul on Bradford for the high kick in spite of the fact there's nobody around him. Ball comes back to Krauthausen. Krauthausen just inside the halfway line toward the Detroit end of the field. Krauthausen in step kick over to the near side of Lakerman who heads it back over to Harshani. Harshani coming up the right side leads it to Vanderveen. Vanderveen in a race lost it. Harshani loses it. Comes over to the far side controlled by Angus Moffat. Open man on the left wing going in deep. Controlled by Oates. Oates makes a good move. Gets in close. Feeds it out in front. And it's cleared away at the last moment by Harshani. Detroit with outstanding playmaking, but no score. Good heel spin kick to the left side. Left wing just outside the penalty arc. Pass comes back to Earl. Back to Oates. Oates tries to thread it through two soccer's no way. Comes to the near side. Anderson has it. Anderson leads a pass up to Julie V at the halfway line. Brings it up the right wing. Anderson. Anderson is just raced off the ball by Eddie Calhoun. Back to Lakerman. Lakerman as the soccer's go on the attack. Woolrich on the right wing. Does some nice dribbling. Left to right off his feet. Comes across the 35-yard line. Straight down the middle. Looking for help, but there's nobody at the penalty area right now. They'd be offside. Comes back on the left side at Crowdhausen. Crowdhausen leads it into Ingram on a give and go. Comes back out in front to V. V turns around, and he takes a weak shot, and it goes wide. Julie should have pushed it to the right wing there. Uh, Anderson was waiting on the ball. Had shouted to him, but he tried to throw pass. Didn't have the room for it, Joe. Now Detroit, a good pass, but a little bit too far. Oh, that's a big number! And he almost gave it away, but helping him out as usual, Alan Mayer, who has made some big saves already this afternoon. 14-15 to go in the first half. San Diego brings it across the halfway line, up the left wing side. Newsom breaks out in front of Vanderveen. Jan in control of the ball. Outstanding midfielder for this soccer team. Over to V, V back up to... Oh, right, not down there from behind. Pushing from behind that time. He's had a very physical player, and he showed up that time. He had a direct hit by San Diego just outside the 35-yard line. No score in the first half, 13.49 to go. Both teams have had good scoring opportunities. San Diego probably a couple more, but a moment ago, over the left hand, Rowland Mayer just made a sensational save, jumping up in the air to make a play. And now the referee is giving a verbal warning to Calhoun, George. Yeah. And so tells him to behave himself. He didn't give him a yellow card, but he's warning him about his play. Calvin is pretty robust. He played with the Scottish national team a couple of years back. Right out, takes a long shot himself up for the goal, but it goes wide. Okay, we will be right back. There's no score in the first half. Number two, Hunter with the ball. Right. 
express. side and so there is uh, no score in the first half right now 12 minutes to go in the first half Sockers and Detroit scoreless now the ball out to the halfway line goes out to Anderson back it comes in midfield controlled there by Vanderbeen Vanderbeen on the left wing side to Newsom and it's fed up the left wing side Sockers in deep they've got Ingram in the middle but the ball goes across and we'll have a corner kick coming up for San Diego. So the, the Sockers will have a, a corner kick from the left wing side. Julie D will take it. Gene Woolrich is out in front. He's coming back out just inside the penalty arc. Nover on the move. High kick coming right down in front toward Harshani. Harshani got a chance at it, but it's a header blocked away by Detroit. Detroit on the near side and controlled by Paul Hunter. Now up the left wing side. Bringing it back up is Bradford. Bradford to the 35-yard line. Up the left wing side, goes in, controlled there by Angus Moffat. Moffat puts it in, he centers it on a crossing pass, and it's headed out. Comes back out across the 35-yard line. Now brought back out toward midfield, taken there. Up the left wing side, taken by Mickey Leach. Thank you. And then finally comes back out across the 35-yard line, controlled by Detroit. Detroit over to the left wing side. Davies has it. Davies feeds it back on the near side. And a feed in close. They try a through pass. Good play there, but they can't control it. Mickey Leach couldn't hold it. It's forced away by Vanderveen. Goes across the touch line, and Detroit, though, will throw it in. Ten minutes to go in the first half. No score. Detroit's Bradford just outside the 35-yard line. Avoids Vanderbeen. They try a header, a reverse header, in effect. And Alan Mayer, though, makes an easy save. Mayer waits for everybody to funnel back and starts to bring it back up himself. Just inside the penalty arc of San Diego, moving left to right in the first half. No score. Got some other scores for you. Vancouver this afternoon beat Colorado 1 to nothing at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Washington over Minnesota 1 to nothing in a shootout. And New York beat Dallas 3 to 1 before 50,127 in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Now down the left wing side, controlled by Angus Moffat. Moffat goes for a long shot, very wide. He took it from just outside the penalty area. And it goes across the goal line, so it'll be a goal kick for San Diego. 9.25 remaining. 2.80 goal. That's the number to call. 2.80 goal. Call them right now. There are people standing by at the switchboard. And you can order uh, season tickets or check into group plans or just look ahead on that schedule. Get some tickets for those upcoming games of this long homestand starting Wednesday night against Houston and Saturday night, Portland in town, the Portland Timbers. A couple of big, important games for San Diego and a critical one here on the road today. Now a pass up the right wing for Moffitt. Moffitt's in deep. Vanderbeek trying to pick him up. And the pass is uh, it's, uh, going to be thrown for San Diego. They're going to call one side on Detroit at the last second there as Detroit touched the ball and were called offside. So the throw and taken. And still away by Detroit. Detroit's Moffitt makes a good uh, save up the, up the knee, dropped it back. They feed it into the penalty area, cleared back out by Julie V. Out there the halfway line, Sockers get control of the ball and start to bring it up. Up the right wing side it goes, Jerry Ingram. Ingram in the middle, right at the halfway line, which is painted a bright orange here, which is, uh, as we said, the colors of the Detroit Express. Over to Anderson, Anderson on the left wing side, a lead path. Gets it up on the left side to crowd out. The crowd out comes back outside the 35-yard line. Pushes it over the right side of Lakerman. Lakerman getting in deep. Takes a high shot. Blocked off out of front. Kyle Hoon with a header. Gets it over the near side of Bradford. And it drops back in practically to the goal line. Detroit holds it, though. Bradford at the near side. Being pressed by Woolrich. Detroit clearing it now for the halfway line. But a nice play by Hart Johnny. And he kicks it on the instep over the left side. Nice play over to Crowdhouse and into Woolrich. Now the soccer is on an offensive thrust. Over to the far left wing, and the goalkeeper high in the air. Steve Hardwick makes a save. Hardwick. Detroit will send it back out with 7.45 to go in the first half. 
one of the great players of the game, Mick Leach, uh, for the Detroit team. He played 15 years with the Queen's Park Rangers, a famous London club. Murphy on the left wing, and he's got some help. He's at the corner of the penalty area. Puts it in the middle as he tries a crossing pass. What a good kick out of the zone by the Sockers, and they get it out across the 35-yard line. Slipping on a wet spot on the field right now, one of the Sockers having trouble. And now we've got a foul, a foul against San Diego. It's going to be a direct kick, and it's at a spot on the field where they got a chance at it, so they'll have to go into the wall here. It's about, oh, say, seven yards inside the 35-yard line. So it's on the near side, just barely. It's to the uh, near post side as we face it. Going from right to left for Detroit. A pass into the middle. A shot and blocked magnificently that time by Ingram. Ingram threw his whole body in front of the ball to make the block on a hard power shot. Now a cross pass again, right out into the penalty arc. Blocked away by V. V, a beautiful kick as he gets it up toward midfield. Drops it back, and here come the Sockers. Sockers on the left wing, bringing it up. No score. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Lead pass on the left wing, bringing it in deep. In control. Anderson, great play. Puts it in, and he kicks it too far as he tried to center it out in front, but it went too far and goes across the touchline on the near side of the field with 6.20 remaining in the first half. It seems to me, Joe, that uh, the, uh, the, the soccers, when they attack up the left wing, they try and bring the ball back to the right foot. This delays the game somewhat, allows the other team to uh, regroup, as it were. They should try more left-footed cross. I'm sure it would pay off for them. And, of course, the left-footed cross travels away from the goal, away from the goalie, plays him out of the game. Now the ball at the 35-yard line of San Diego. Brought up the left side, controlled by Earl, and forced off from Harshani. And we have a foul, though, back at midfield. It's going to be a direct kick and a foul called against Detroit. So Detroit, a lot of uh, unnecessary fouls, really, because they weren't within 40 yards of the ball when they committed that foul. Back to Peter Nover, just outside his own penalty arc, moving from left to right. Comes across the 35-yard line, leads a pass on the left wing to Newsom, but it's too far for John. Can't possibly reach it, and Detroit will have a throw in from the touch line just to their side of the halfway line. We're inside at the Silver Dome, a magnificent building, seats over 80,000, and it's air pressure that holds the top up. It is a, uh, a series of wires and uh, canvas above this thing that is really something. Tremendous pressure as you walk in the door here as the air pressure is what keeps it up. Now the ball at the halfway line, controlled by San Diego, or by Detroit on the left wing side. Earl, Earl moving on Nover. Nover trying to stay with him. They try to center the ball, and Nover just forces it off his body, and it goes across the goal line. But they are going to call a corner kick for Detroit with 4.51 to go. Yeah, Earl is one of the 100 goal club. He played for Fulham, scored 100, over 100 goals while with Fulham. Now with Leicester City in English First Division. Here's Bradford, the little guy, puts it in right in front of the goal. And Alan Mayer again way up in the air to make the save and quickly gets it out the left wing. Pass up the left side. Wilrich racing the ball, but Detroit picks it up at its own 35-yard line. Still no scoring in the first half has not been what you could call really a strong offensive game either. There have been some good chances for each side, but not a lot of them. Now Bradford, Bradford in the middle. And he's belted from behind as uh, hit briefly by one of the Sockers, but no foul. Back on the left wing side. They try a crossing pass. Here's an open man on the left side. Mouth it, and it's forced off on a nice play by Lakerman, who trapped it off his chest and forced it out of bounds. But another corner kick coming up for the Express, and it'll again be taken by Dave Bradford. 5'5", 138 pounder. Puts it right in front of the goal and it's headed out by Lakerman. Near side, Julie V trying to catch up with him but he can't and it goes out across the touch line. Quickly fed back in. Good play by Davis. Davis getting in close. They drop it back. Back out to Moffitt. Moffitt looking for an open man. Makes a good move on Lakerman. Puts it out in front. They try an overhead scissors kick. Half a scissors is about what it was. And Alan Mayer though catches it as it goes high in the air. Mayer just rolls it over to Nover, who's out in front of the goal box. And Nover brings it up toward the penalty arc. Leads in the middle of Vanderveen. 3.24 to go in the first half. Vanderveen up the left wing side. Leads a pass intercepted by Bradford. Bradford at midfield. He's tackled off the ball by Woolrich on an aggressive effort. Soccer's a very aggressive team. That's the way Hubert wants him to play it. Up the left wing side. A lead to Ingram. Blocked away. Comes too far. Back to the goalkeeper, Steve Hardwick. He'll clear it back out for Detroit on our simulcast. Yeah, the use of... Uh um, Jerry Ingram is a post here. They shove the ball through to Ingram, and of course he lays the ball off nicely. He just overplayed it a little there for uh, Anderson to run onto. Ball back to Julie V at the halfway line. No scour in the first half. Centers it in toward the 35-yard line, but blocked away that time on a good play by Eddie Calhoun. 
Now Vanderveen on the left wing side, and it's blocked by Detroit. Detroit, Paul Hunter starts to bring it up. He's tackled off the ball by the Sockers, but it's back in control and forced across the touchline. And it was pretty close on that one, but they're going to say Detroit. 2.31 to go in the first half. No score, and we'll be right back. Franz Krauthausen has suffered a leg injury. Axel Neumann is in the lineup now for the Sockers. A 1-14 remain in the first half. There is no score. Joe Starkey and George Logan on the simulcast. 2-8-0 goal for ticket information on the Sockers on Wednesday and Saturday night this week. Hope you'll be out there. Perfect. Now Perfy on the right wing. Drops it back across the 35-yard line of San Diego. They try a through pass. Nova steals the ball. Has trouble with it. Neumann coming over to help out as, uh, as Earl tries to grab it. Can't. Comes back out. Now the ball at the halfway line. A lead pass on the left wing. In deep. Ingram trying to save it. He kept it in. No, he didn't. They say it just went across. And so we're now down to 40 seconds to go in the first half. We mentioned the competition today is uh, significant. They had a double header here with Detroit and Texas. And, the, you know, the Tigers are red hot. And then the hockey playoffs are really a big thing here. Everybody's going wild over the Red Wings. But that stopped quickly because the Canadians the last year was leading four to nothing. But that has had a major effect on the, the draw here today. That's tough competition for the new team in town, but this is going to be a great soccer city. We said 28,000 here last week. It's the, the coming sport. We hope you'll get out and take a look at it in San Diego in the next couple of weeks. Arshani leads a long pass up the right side for Woolrich, who appeared to be onside. He was just outside the penalty area. On the right side, going in deep. Good dribble. He's got time, only two seconds. They better hurry. They're not going to have time to shoot. Lead it into the middle, and the half expires. Not quite enough time to set up that final shot. And the first half is over. There is no score. We will be back. Alan Meyer, director of marketing, will be back at halftime. Joe Starkey for George Logan. See you in a little while. You hear me down there? I have no, I can't hear you. Are we on? Okay. Are these mics on? T say hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Pardon? Give me a clue. Okay, is that better? Can you hear us now? Hello there, we're up here high above the Silver Dome. I'm standing here with the president of the San Diego Soccers, Mr. Ed Lewis. Ed, this is quite a stadium, isn't it? It's absolutely one of the most magnificent edifices I've ever seen. It's really a remarkable feat of engineering and it's exciting to be here. Well, you know, we had, when you talk about excitement, you, will tell, you know that here in San Diego, starting next Wednesday night, we're gonna do the Steve Bishop night. And that's the night that we're going to tell people exactly what soccer is all about. There'll be a demonstration by our players out on the field, and uh, they'll really know about soccer. Absolutely. Uh, as you know, the gates open early. The game is on Wednesday, April 26th. And you might be interested to know the way this thing happened. Steve Bishop wrote a column in the San Diego newspaper concerning the fact that he thinks that the public needs of education in the intricacies of the sport and we invited him to be the teacher. So Steve Bishop is the host, and the San Diego Soccers will teach the citizens of San Diego all about the finer points of soccer. On top of that, I'm holding this up, and I hope they can get a picture of it. 
We are going to give these away to the first 3,000 people through the courtesy of Straw Hat Pizza. And these are the World Book of Soccer, so to give you all the rules, just what the play is all about. And there's an old saying, Ed, you know, if you don't understand the game, you can't enjoy it. No question about it, but I think after coming out to see the Steve Bishop demonstration and getting a chance to study the Straw Hat Pizza booklets, I think that all of our San Diego soccer fans will be a lot more educated and will be in a position to back our club. Well, not only that, at the halftime, just to be different, the fraternities of San Diego State are going to have a chariot race. Can you imagine that? And I understand that the chariots are not going to be pulled by horses, but probably by freshmen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now I've got another surprise for Tell you. Tell me Paul. about it. Tell me about it. It'll be the introduction of the soccerettes. Oh. They have, there they are on the screen, and they are truly lovely girls. You haven't seen them, Ed, but uh, now that you're president, we'll let you check them out. Well, I'm supposed to be able to get the benefit of checking them out personally, but I'm sure that this is so beautiful that my wife would object, but she's better looking than all of them. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. I really <laughs> am. Now, let me tell you something else. On the following Saturday, we are going to have another spectacular night in San Diego. We're going to play the Portland, and it'll be a game that you won't forget. And that particular night, we are going to have the Saco 7-Up Sock Night. 7-Up has been superb and working with us to present Saco Socks to all, I think it's the first 3,000 kids who come into the stadium. And you've got to remember, all you fans, that particularly you youngsters, that this is the beginning of your opportunity to collect a San Diego Soccer's uniform complete. Now, also on that night, Ed, we're having a championship game at 4 o'clock. The gates will open, and the CYSA First Division Championship game will be held against San Fernando Villas against the San Diego team. And this should be really something to see because these youngsters are good. Well, youth soccer in San Diego, as you know, uh, has been a hotbed of uh, action. And now they're coming down to the finals, and these kids are excited, and we're just delighted to play host to them. Also, that same night, there'll be a drawing that 7-Up is sponsoring three scholarships to the George Logan soccer camp this summer, and it is a marvelous, marvelous camp. I'm sure all you kids who are interested in soccer will want to come out and take a chance and be there, and hopefully one of you will be the scholarship winner. Wouldn't that be terrific? Well, I could... Okay. How much, how much time are we using it? This is Detroit Express' newest player. One of the finest German players around. Okay. Can't do it. Can't do it. You know, Ed, I'll tell you something else that you don't know. Uh, Marvin, Marvin Milks, our general manager, came up with a terrific idea. We talked to Second Soul, who is one of our sponsors, and they're going to supply us with these official soccer balls, which means that it'll be the fans' appreciation. In other words, every time a San Diego player scores a goal, a number will be called, and a fan will get a fully autographed ball by our team. You know, these balls cost us a fortune, but I'll tell you, I'm all sure you agree with me that I can't wait to give a dozen away every night. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> now, for the piece de resistance that we really want to tell you about, Coming up, we are going to play an exhibition game, as you know, with Dusseldorf, Germany. Yes, the Germans are coming, the Germans are coming. That's huh? exactly right. And alongside of not only the German Dusseldorf team, but there will be a pregame between the Phoenix German American Club from Anaheim and the San Diego German American Club. And these teams are really good. So actually, you're going to see a doubleheader, which leads me into this. 
If you're not familiar with it, I'd like to tell you about our Take 5 plan. If you come down to the window, window H that is open, or call up and reserve it, you can pick any five teams, including the next three, including Dusseldorf, and you will have the same seat for every game of the five that you pick, which is pretty nice. It's your opportunity to make sure that you get the seat that you want and that you can come and enjoy five terrific nights with the San Diego Soccer. That's right. Now, here's another surprise for you. I can't wait for this one. Well, we got them lined up wow. for the fans in San Diego. Ashley Whippet, good old Ashley, is going to be here in the near future for the dog contest of the world. He's the Frisbee champ, and I think you're gonna see a picture of him now, and this was taken on the grounds of the White House in Washington with the president's daughter, Ashley Viz. Have you ever been there, Ed? To the White House? Yeah. Yeah, but I voted the wrong way. Well, you and Ashley, what are you gonna do? Okay, there you will see a picture of Ashley, and we have just a couple of more minutes, which I would like to once more tell you that this is your opportunity, you people in San Diego, to come on out, see the soccers. We've got a great, great team. We're the only winning team in San Diego. We're 4-0, and when we leave here, we're going to be a little bit better. I feel that. We sure hope so. We missed one goal opportunity that was super in the first half, but we'll get it back. Don't you worry. Now, let me go back. Good. Bob, I want to go to the I want to go to Window H now. Right. Are we on now again? Okay, I'm gonna hold this up. Take a see if you can get a shot, can you? Good. Okay. Okay, on the screen, I think you're looking, or you will see, our Take 5 plan. And once more, I'd like to tell you that you can take and pick any five games for as low as $20. And this entitles you to your same seat for all five games, and this, Ed, includes the Dusseldorf game, if they so desire. If they want to select the Dusseldorf, and many, many people are choosing it, they know it's going to be a winner of an evening. That's right. You know... Here, it, it, I'm dressed a little bit differently than the boss. It's pretty cold here in Detroit, but with the cold and with everything else, we prefer the San Diego Stadium because that's our home and that is one gorgeous place to visit. Come and see us there every time you possibly can. Our players want your support, and we're going to show you one heck of a good evening anytime you join us. Now, we're going to close off by showing you and telling you that you can go to Window H right now, or you can call dial 280-GO, and for the first time, you can reserve a seat by telling the girls on the phone they will hold it. You can come by tomorrow and pick it up. So we certainly hope that we're going to see all of you. And Mr. President, I want to thank, I sound like a politician, don't you? You asked me if I lived in the White House. <laughs> That's right. Well, <laughs> give my best to Ashley. Thank you. We're, we're going to say goodbye to you. We'll be home Monday and certainly coming home a winner once more. And we'll see you all Wednesday night. Thank you. That's Okay, fine.
I'm here. Joe Starkey back in Pontiac, Michigan, and at halftime, a 0-0 score. Nobody's put one in the net so far, and of course, uh, you have to think ahead a little bit, maybe. Uh, I think the Sockers, based on their offensive uh, potential, uh, would probably figure that if it stayed even all the way through overtime or something like that, they'd probably have the edge in the shootout. A uh, team with a lot of uh, heavy shooters like Anderson and Ingram and uh, Vanderveen. But we're ready for the second half. In the second half, the Sockers will be going from right to left. There is no score. We gave you some of the other scores. Let's run them down again in case you uh, didn't uh, catch them. New York beat Dallas 3-1. to one. Vancouver over Colorado 1-0 to nothing in Denver. And Washington 1-0 to nothing over Minnesota in a shootout. So we're ready for the start of the second half. Remember, the Sockers will be home on Wednesday night and Saturday night of this week. Houston on Saturday night. Portland. Or, or I should say, uh, yes, uh, Houston on Wednesday night and Portland on Saturday night. Both games will start at uh, 7.30, and I do hope you'll be out there Wednesday. They've got that uh, marvelous uh, clinic going on at 6.15 on Wednesday night. And as Alan Meyer mentioned, the number to call is 280-GOAL if you'd like to uh, talk about tickets for San Diego Soccer Soccer. And it's, uh, it's going to be a big thing. There's no question about it. It is doing so well around the country. Uh, so many new teams, of course. But the reason they've had such a rapid expansion is that everybody sees it, that it's going to be as big in the United States as it is in the rest of the world. And uh, you look at some of the attendance figures around the league in some of these new cities, and this is the most perfect example, certainly. Uh, today is not an adequate judgment, uh, certainly on Detroit, 28,000 last week. But today, with the Red Wings in the playoffs against Montreal, which uh, has been the biggest sport in this town for many years, and the lie on the uh, good start by the baseball team, well, it's hurt him a little bit today, no question about it. We're ready for the start of the second half, and the ball goes across the touch line. Touch last by Detroit. The Sockers will put it in. We're just underway in the second half. In the first half, the saves, four saves for Detroit, three for San Diego, corner kicks, two for San Diego, and five for Detroit. There were 13 fouls committed by Detroit in the first half, George, believe it or not, and only five by San Diego. And that's interesting because uh, Vogelsinger, of course, is an avowed practitioner of a very physical game, and Detroit has handed it to him uh, pretty well themselves today. Now Gene Woolrich, right wing side, deep in the Detroit zone, looking for Julie V behind him. He's dribbling the ball nicely, trying to get around a defender, Ian Davis. Still in control, just at the touch line, far side, back to V. V being pressed down the play by Leach, back to Woolrich, who comes over to help. And the soccer is trying to stay in close toward the penalty area. They feed it into the middle, and it's headed out on a nice defensive play. Out to Bradford for Detroit. Detroit brings it up to the halfway line. Newsom trying to steal the ball, but he can't get it. Now Detroit gets it back. Axel Neumann, Neumann replacing uh, the injured uh, soccer player got hurt uh, with an ankle injury earlier in the game. Of course, uh, Franz Krauthausen, so Neumann's in there now. Now the ball at the 35-yard line of San Diego goes out across the touch line, and Detroit will throw it in. Detroit gets it in quickly. Over to Mickey Leach. Leach deep at the 35-yard line on the left wing side. He volleys it in toward the middle. They go for a header blocked away by Nover. Goes out in front of the goal. The threat out in front of the goal. Detroit scores, and it's Murphy. Murphy scores to give the Detroit Express a one nothing lead. Boy, that was some play by Detroit. It was set up very nice as Furphy was allowed a lot of room. And when you're in that close as he was, he just had to pick his side. He was only about eight yards in front of goalkeeper Alan Mayer. And he drilled it. He picked the, the left-hand side of Mayer. He could have gone either way and scored, no question about it. So the goal comes at about 46-42, I would call it, somewhere around there. The clock, of course, keeps moving. Maybe 46, uh, well, we'll get it officially, but in the 46th minute, and it comes from Furphy, a 19-year-old son of the coach who's off to an amazing start at the age of 19 in the North American Soccer League. So now the Sockers have to come from behind, but they've done that all year. Now just forced out across the goal line by Detroit, so a corner kick coming up for the Sockers. Good bit of dribbling there by Julie V. Took two men on and uh, really superb dribbling skills there. Woolrich will take the corner kick, a right-footed kicker. That means it will swing out, but he puts it right in toward the goal area, and it's headed out and forced out across the goal line, though, by defender Eddie Calhoun. And we'll have another corner kick for San Diego, this time from the near side of the field. 46-36, the time of the goal. Moffitt with the assist, Furphy with the goal. And Furphy off to a fine start with three goals on the year. One to nothing score. Corner kick coming up by San Diego. 
They put it out in front, going for the header, but Newsom, who was too high over his head, falling down is Vanderbeen, and quickly up the left wing. Coming up is Moffitt. Moffitt to the 35-yard line. Lakerman backing up. Detroit on the move with that one to nothing lead. Ball forced away just outside the penalty area. No foul. Surprisingly enough on San Diego, fans are booing, and probably with some justification. Right wing side. Woolrich on the right wing. Breaks around the defense for the ball. Forced out of bounds by Davis. And it'll be brought in on a goal kick by Detroit. Good quick break away there by Muffet. Muffet, by the way, played for the Dumbarton soccer team over in Scotland years ago. Fine player. He's a Canadian, very popular here because he spent a lot of time playing soccer right across the lake here in, the, in Windsor. Or I should say across the beautiful Detroit River, if that's the term. Steve Hardwick, the goalkeeper for Detroit, ready to kick it out from the penalty area and sends it all the way downfield, almost to the 35-yard line of San Diego. Cleared back up by Neumann. Neumann gets it across the halfway line, and Detroit backing up on defense, has the ball there. Oates up the left wing side, tries a lead pass, broken up by Harshani, a nice play. Boslow at his own 35-yard line of the right wing, sends it up the touch line on the far side. It's checked away off of Woolrich, and a foul called by Detroit as they belted him, as they belted Woolrich, and so it'll be a free kick, a direct free kick for San Diego, but right at the halfway line, so of not particular significance. One to nothing score as Detroit scores early in the second half to take the lead. The unbeaten San Diego Sockers. Up the right wing side it goes. San Diego in control of the ball. Harshani, and we have another whistle on the play. And this time it's another foul on uh, Detroit. So San Diego gets another kick, this time a direct kick on a foul by Detroit. And this time from the 35-yard line, far side of the field, Arjani will take the kick. Let's see how he decides to play it. Puts it up high. And it's headed back out, though. Knocked down by Neumann. Neumann can't keep control, and Detroit forces it all the way down to the other end of the field where Alan Mayer comes out of the goal to pick it up. Now John Newsom. Newsom inside his own 35-yard line. A left wing pass. Knocked down there as it's uh, cleared back to Detroit. Detroit has the ball at its own 35-yard line. Up toward midfield, up the right wing side. Across the halfway line. Bradford has it. Being pressed by Neumann and Vanderbeek. Tries a lead pass. They go for a header. Drop it back outside the penalty. Arcus shot by Leach, and he puts it up much too high into the seats. one to nothing, Detroit. 39 minutes remaining, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back in Pontiac, Michigan. one nothing score early in the second half. The Express leading the Sockers. The Sockers 4-0 on the year, the best record in the North American Soccer League. Are they going to finally lose one? Long way to go before we decide that. Up the right side, controlled by Steve Earle. Earle feeds it into the goal area. They try to lead it right out in front of Meyer, but it doesn't go. And it comes back out to Vanderveen. Vanderveen up center. Has Anderson to his right. Sacker's on the attack quickly. 35-yard line. Anderson to the right wing. He's got some help on an overlap going in as Lakerman. Comes back out past Vanderveen. And Detroit picks it back up and brings it up. Mickey Leach to the halfway line. Stolen by Newsom. Newsom forces it up to the 35-yard line. And goes in deep. Detroit will have possession of the ball. 
Near the, side to Alan Moffat. Detroit Devil in command just now. Bradford at five foot five and Moffat at five foot seven are really getting a grip on the game. So the soccer's better, you know, really come on to something quickly here, Joe. Generally, the soccer's have been an excellent second half team because they are in superb condition and have tended to wear the opposition down. They've come from behind to win in the second half and have put on some excellent efforts in the second half of the contest so far this year. But right now, Detroit certainly with a bit of an upper hand. Up the right wing side, it goes to Moffitt. Moffitt centers it in and it's just over the goal, just barely over Alan Mayer's head as it just hit the crossbar and went out of bounds. So it'll be a goal kick for San Diego. Wednesday well, night, Houston in town, and Saturday night, Portland. Hope you'll be out there. 2-8-0 goal if you'd like to give the soccers a call right now and watch the excitement of the North American Soccer League. Now Vanderveen. Vanderveen at his own 35-yard line. Starts to bring it up the middle. Over to the left wing side to Newsom. Newsom to the halfway line. Quickly up the left wing. Good dribble. Goes around with Steve Earle very nicely. Up to Vanderveen at the 35-yard line. Outside the penalty arc. Heel kick. Drops it back. Getting in close as Anthony drills it. And a save made by Steve Hardwick, the goalkeeper. It stayed surprisingly low on the surface that time, George. It hardly raised up at all. Yeah, he got his knee well over the ball there, purposely kept it, because if you put the ball in the air, the goalie has, can see the ball clearly, Joe, and, uh, you know, he can get it much quicker through the air. Vanderveen again brings it up inside the 35, right down the middle, outside the penalty arc. He's tackled off the ball. Bradford, a superb midfielder, takes it away again. And they drop it back to the goalkeeper, Steve Hardwick. Hardwick from Newcastle. United First Division team. And in the offseason, by the way, is a cricket player. John Newsom heads it back. It comes to Nover. And we've got a foul call. In fact, we are going to get a... Uh, the referee looks like he's going to pull out the old yellow card here. Let's see if he does. Nope, guess not. He went into his pocket, and I thought he was about to do something nasty to one of the <laughs> players. But uh, apparently he was just... Uh, who knows what he read. Maybe a pack of gum in there. Up the right wing side, soccer's Peter Anderson. Couldn't get it. And Detroit again on the move, bringing it up to the 35-yard line of San Diego. San Diego gets it back across the halfway line, bringing it up. Vanderveen, slow to react, lost the ball, and it's taken away by the aggressive Detroit team. Steve Earle over to the right wing side to Angus Moffitt. Moffitt inside the 35-yard line. Newsom picks it up there. Detroit sends two men into the penalty area. They try a give and go, but it's forced out across the touchline, and possession will go to Harshani of San Diego. Soccer's bring it up. Up the middle comes Anderson. Anderson working at a midfield spot as there have been some major lineup changes today. It's uh, not often that a coach will uh, tinker with a winning combination, but that has happened today. Vogelsinger made some changes. Now the ball back of the halfway line to Lakerman. Lakerman, just outside the 35-yard line, puts it into the middle. Over to Vanderveen. Vanderveen, a high volley on the right wing side. Wilrich trying to get, but it's headed off by Davis. Goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in, though, by San Diego, about 20 yards out of the touch line from the uh, goal kick corner on the far side of the field. Or the corner kick uh, spot, I should say. Simulcast, XETV, KOGO Radio. High pass into the penalty area. Ingram tries a header, but he's double teamed off the ball, and Detroit forces it out toward the 35-yard line. V goes for a header, can't quite get it. Now he screens off the ball, trying to keep Detroit away, but Detroit steals it up the left wing side, control there, and apparently went out of bounds. They're going to call it out of bounds, and it'll be a throw in by San Diego. 33 minutes to go. Yeah, on the Astro turf, you'll see that the ball does bounce an awful lot. Bounces very high, so you really have to go to the pitch of the ball here, where the ball is going to bounce. Otherwise, you lose control completely. Bradford has it for Detroit. The Detroit Express. They're two and one on the year. This is a very good soccer team, and they're on their home field today, an Astro turf field. And right now, they've got that one goal lead. Ball dropped back toward midfield. Ingram tries to grab the ball. He gets it over to Vanderveen. Vanderveen drops it back to Lakerman. Peter starts to bring it up, pushes it over to the right wing side, up toward the middle. Soccers have it, brought by Harshani. Harshani outside the 35-yard line of San Diego. Clears it in toward, and a bad pass, though. Cleared over to the left wing side, and Detroit steals it up the right wing. Detroit Oates is belted off the ball by Nover. It goes out of bounds, but no foul. But San Diego will lose possession. Detroit will... I, th I guess they figure they get a kick, and I guess they do. So there was a foul on that play, and it'll be a direct kick. And it's about 30 yards out. So let's see what Angus Moffat decides to do with it. Neumann lines up right in front of him. They put a very high kick into the goal area, and Alan Mayer, going up like a basketball player for a slam dunk, comes down with the ball, and he'll bring it back out. 
Clears it up the middle to Vanderveen. 32 minutes remaining in the game in regulation. One and nothing score. Soccer's need a goal, and they really have not had many opportunities here in the second half at all. Vanderveen up the right side toward Woolrich. Woolrich tries to scissors it over his head, but instead forces it out of bounds. So we'll get a throw in from Detroit. The Express will put it in. Down at their own end of the field, far side, Detroit going from left to right of the second half. Simulcast radio and television in San Diego. Radio only Wednesday night against Houston. Same thing Saturday night at home against Portland. Two big games coming up for the Sockers. Undefeated right now. Best record in the NASL. Now back to Alan Mayer, the goalkeeper for the Sockers. From Madison College in Virginia. Islip, New York, right wing side. Sockers start to bring it up. Harshani toward the halfway line. Pushes it up. They feed it back into the middle. And here come the Sockers on the move. Julie V. B, American citizen, has played a lot, though, in uh, Holland and was born, in fact, in uh, Hungary. Now a lead pass. They try to get it to Ingram as they try to center it, but Detroit is there on defense once again as Ian Davis has it. Goalkeeper Hardwick just rolls it out to Davis on the left wing side. 31 minutes remaining. One to nothing score. Express leads it. Long pass on a volley. Good trap off the knee by Detroit. Detroit, Murphy, left wing side. Open man. Oh, but he's offside. Offside. Yeah, he just he should have delayed his run through there. He tried to go direct instead of taking a sort of half circle run, Joe. And uh, the result was that he put himself in a, an offside position before the ball was kicked. Okay, San Diego with the ball at midfield. Peter Anderson. Anderson from Luton Town, where he played for a long time with great success. Has a great natural scoring ability. John Newsom on the left wing. Tries a lead pass. Detroit is there again. Bad pass. V upset that the pass didn't get to him. Coming back up as Calhoun on a break. Tries a pass and Nover steals it away. Dropped in. Good heel kick by the Sockers. They come up on a four on four. Left wing pass. Goes to Neumann. Neumann outside the penalty area on the left wing. Starts to move in closer. Trying to get free. He takes a shot and he just misses on the near side. And it goes wide and out of bounds. So with 30 minutes remaining of the game, one to nothing Detroit. We'll be right back. We're in Pontiac, Michigan. Joe Starkey and George Logan. 28 minutes, 55 seconds remaining regulation time. And the Express leads at 1-0 on a goal by Keith Furphy. And John Ingram now at the halfway line. Leads it up the left wing. Too far. And Detroit gets it, but they are called for a foul. And so it'll be a free direct kick by San Diego at midfield area. Just to their side, or the Detroit side of the halfway line. The field, uh, of course, is for football, so they've had to uh, wash down and get rid of the football lines, and I think it may have caused some damp spots on the field because it looks like it's still a little wet out there uh, from uh, washing them away, but it does not seem to have any effect on the game at all. John Newsom going to try the kick from 45 yards out on the left wing side as Vanderveen in the middle, and it looks like he's just going to drill it right into the penalty arc. They go for a header, but it's cleared out instead by Detroit as Mickey Leach cleared it out. It goes across the touch line, and Lakerman will throw it in. Lakerman throws it back into Harshani outside the 35-yard line on the right wing. He drills a rising shot, goes into Ingram. Ingram tries to drop it back, but Detroit steals the ball. Now Detroit up the right wing side. Bradford brings it up. Long lead pass. Going up is Nover. He heads it. Comes over to Newsom on the near side. Newsom tries a spinning header, but it comes back over to the left side. Open man, a shot and wide by Detroit. As Furphy tried the shot, it went wide. It goes across the goal. It'll be a goal kick. 27 and a half minutes remain. Soccers have the ball. They trail. One to nothing. We'll be right back.
Bradford. Controversial call here just a second ago. The ball now at the Detroit end of the field, but Alan Mayer making a save where the ball appeared to cross the goal line, but apparently didn't quite make it. And Detroit and the fans here very upset with the referee close on the play and said no goal. So a tremendous play by Mayer on a close-in shot from no more than four or five feet away, a remarkable save, and it kept the score from mounting to two to nothing, which could have been curtains for the Sockers in this one. Yeah, the linesman was right up in play there, Joe. There was absolutely no cause for asking for a goal. Of course, the home team, they want the goal. But the referee was right on the spot. The linesman was right on the goal line. The ball definitely did not go over the line. Very, very close, however. And so the Sockers, though, still down only by one. Peter Lakerman on the right wing. Slides for the ball. Falls down off it. And Detroit has possession. Detroit, aggressive team here this afternoon. Leading one to nothing. Mickey Leach in control. Drops it back to his goalkeeper, Steve Hardwick. And Sockers have not had many good opportunities. And this is an aggressive, offensive-oriented team, and so you've got to give credit to Detroit for holding down uh, the NASL's best team right now with a top record, but having their troubles in the Silver Dome this afternoon. Now a pushing foul against uh, San Diego, and so that's a direct kick for the Detroit Express about midfield. 25 minutes remaining in regulation. The Sockers need at least one goal because you have the feeling that if they can at least get that back and they force an overtime or a shootout, then the odds shift to the soccer side of the field with their scoring potential. But Detroit's done a great job of defense this afternoon. They have really lined up in front of their goal, their keeper, when necessary. Here's a header right out in front, and Mayer trying to grab the loose ball goal. It's put up in the air right to the side. Mayer jumps in the air and grabs it and holds on. Alan Mayer with another superb bit of goalkeeping under tremendous pressure from Detroit. Mayer is slow getting up, and thank goodness that he is wearing the helmet, I'll tell you that, because the pressure on him was tremendous. They put a ball that looked like it was going to slide into the corner of the net, but Mayer came way over to the near post and dove across the corner to keep the ball from going in. Then the ball went back up in the air, and Mayer jumped in the air for it. As he did, he ran hard into one of the Detroit players, and that was uh, Moffitt, and Moffitt is very, very slow to regain his senses as the trainer is out to take a look at him right now as Mayer had to go way up in the air to make that second save with a tremendous performance. I think the, the San Diego Wood defense was very slow there. All the, there should have been a foul called on the left winger of the Detroit early on in the play, and I think they stood expecting the, the whistle to go, and of course, this is always fatal, Joe. You've got to play as if uh, you can't assume anything. You've got to keep that play moving. Now up the left wing side, the Sockers, Ingram. Ingram, corner of the goal, the penalty area, right practically at the goal line. Tries a heel kick back to himself, but Detroit steals it away and brings it back up the right wing. 24 minutes remaining in regulation time. Up the right side, Paul Hunter. Hunter, right fullback for Detroit. Leads it up to Furphy, who has the only goal of the game. Bounces off of Furphy and... Uh, also one of the Sackers players, as Doug Wark is in for the first time this year. Doug Wark, number eight for the Sockers, is out there now. And bounced off of him. Detroit keeps the ball, shoots, and it goes over the top of the goal. So with the score one up in Detroit, 23 minutes remaining, we'll be right back. Was an offside or the goal offense? Okay. This is 
Davis. Here's Murphy. goal. 280 goal. That's the number of the call for San Diego soccer tickets. Home Wednesday to Houston and Saturday to Portland. The ball at the Detroit end of the field. Controlled there by Bradford. Woolrich tried to steal it. Couldn't get it. The offense of the soccer has really been shut down effectively by Detroit this afternoon. A superb emotional effort by a Detroit team against the league's best record, the San Diego Sockers. Near side. Comes over to Paul Hunter. Hunter up the right wing across his own 35-yard line. Has Moffitt moving out ahead of him. Doug Wark is in for Julie V right now. This is Wark's first action of the year, by the way, from Middlebury, Vermont, born in Scotland, raised in the United States, been with Rochester, Tampa, and of course uh, runs the uh, soccer's youth clinics. And a long shot from outside the penalty area by Bradford goes very wide. And the soccer's will have a goal kick, send it back up. A time beginning to work against them now, 21 and a half minutes to go. Alan Mayer has been superb in the second half, George. Just some fantastic saves to keep the score for Mounty. Just the usual Alan Mayer. By the way, the, the soccer's will be hoping that Dougie Wark can work some magic here. He scored eight goals in an indoor tournament one game back uh, a couple of years back. Eight goals in one game. So they'll be hoping that he can add a couple today. <laughs> well, I think they'd be happy with one before regulation ends right now, the way this game is going, and take their chances after that. And look out now, we've got a possible brawl here is Anderson. Anderson is really upset and he's going jaw to jaw with the referee. That was a great shot. I wish somebody would get a picture of that one to put in the papers as Anderson looked like Leo the Lip at that time against Jack O'Conlon as they went mouth to mouth and they're calling the foul on Detroit. Vanderveen with a free direct kick from about 50 yards out. Puts it up high into the goal area. Goalkeeper way out to pick it off Steve Hardwick. Hardwick telling everybody to funnel back. Quickly rolls it out to the near side over to Paul Hunter. Hunter brings it up the right wing outside the 35-yard line. 20 minutes, 25 seconds remaining in regulation time. Comes back over and a good half scissors over to the right side to Newsom. Newsom back at his own 35-yard line. Does a great job of dribbling the ball to himself. Left wing side to Vanderveen. He lost it. And it's put up high by Hunter on a high lob pass. Nover with a header gets it up to Wark. Dougie brings it up the left side across the 35-yard line. Wark should be fresh and strong right now. This could be an important factor in this game. 7,800 here this afternoon, nearly 8,000 in uh, Detroit for this game. As we said, under amazing conditions that they could draw that many today. They, were, they didn't expect even that many with the competition from the Red Wings and the baseball game, but they have done very well, drawn nearly 8,000. By the way, the Red Wings lost to Montreal on home ice today, eight to nothing. Not exactly a uh, close one. Now over to the right wing side, bringing it up Detroit, Paul Hunter. Hunter across the halfway line, leads it up to Moffitt. Moffitt outside the penalty area, lead pass, open man, oh, looking for a man out in front, feeds it right up front, and it's off and over into the net. Nover scores for Detroit, it came off his foot, he was trying to deflect it, I think, maybe, George, just trying to deflect it softly to his goalkeeper. Here's a ball. They are attacking the goal line here, Joe. Ball was shoved through on the right wing. The ball is cut back. And Peter, facing his own goal, more or less, slotted it in. It's a very, very difficult situation when you you're facing your own goal. You don't have much option. You try and hit it high. Unfortunately, hit it rather low. And it ended in the net. Well, just one of those things that happens in hockey and it happens in soccer where a defender doing his best to keep the ball or the puck out of the net. Suddenly it goes in on a defensive play where it bounces the wrong way. And that is what has happened here. And so it's two to nothing in favor of Detroit. Now, crossing, trying to get the ball. Lakerman and Calhoun collide hard on the ball. And it comes loose and, uh, or I should say that was Furphy running hard into Lakerman. Now it comes back to Calhoun. Back of the halfway line up the right wing side, tries a long lead pass in toward the penalty area on the right wing. 
Good heel kick by Detroit, but Newsom is there to intercept. Dribbles it off of both knees. Good control on the trap. Drop back to Moffitt. Moffitt with a chest trap. Feeds it in on the half valley. Goes over to the left side, over to the right side. Now over to Calhoun. Calhoun, a good high lob in toward the penalty area. A high shot, and it goes across the goal line. We've got a goal kick for San Diego. 18-15 remaining. San Diego needs some goals fast. They trail 2 to nothing. We'll be right back. Okay, two to nothing score, 17 and a half minutes remaining. Vanderveen arguing with the referee right now. Apparently uh, upset with some of the play of Detroit, which has played a very physical game here today. Doug Wark gets it over to Vanderveen. The goal scored at 70-41. 70-41. And the Sackers now down two to nothing. Detroit coming back up. Down the middle. Lead pass on the left wing. Open man, Graham Oates. Oates at the corner of the penalty area on the left wing. Centers it, and it's cleared back out by Harshani. Out to Nover. Nobody in this building feels worse than Peter Nover about that last goal bouncing off his foot and into the net. But that's going to happen to any team, and uh, it's going to happen more than once during the season in the soccer, no question about it. Now the ball at the halfway line, the far side, taken there by Detroit, 16-41 to go, and a 2 to nothing lead, and the soccer's four-game winning streak is in jeopardy now. Ball at the halfway line. Peter Anderson starts to move on the ball, but it comes back over to Angus Moffat. Moffat over to the right wing side, over to Bradford. Bradford's played a superb game for Detroit. Wilrich starts to move on him. Now Peter Anderson trying to force him back. Dropped all the way back on defense and controlled there by Steve Sargent. Sargent in front of his penalty arc. Brings it back up on the right wing. Tries a long volley. It's on the, caught on the volley and kicked right back up by Newsom up the left wing. Wilrich looks for the steal. Tried to tackle the ball. Couldn't get it. Comes back over to the right wing. Angus Moffat brings it up. Moffat to the 35-yard line. Being pressed by Vanderveen. Drops a pass. Gets it back to Earl. Earl tackled off the ball by Vanderveen. Now Jen brings it up into Anderson. Anderson across the halfway line. Straight down the middle. Has an open man on the right wing if he can lead it to him. Trying to set up a play. Soccer's in control of the ball. Drop back to the 35-yard line to Lakerman. Lakerman deep into the right wing corner as the Sockers are on the attack. A centering pass. And it's headed back out by Turner over to the far side. Hunter, that is. Across the touch line. And San Diego, though, will keep control. Just about the 35-yard line of Detroit. But only 15 and a half minutes to go. And, of course, San Diego have to go. They have to try and get that goal on the board. And uh, this leaves them open at the back for the quick attack by Detroit. Harshiani, a center back to Newsom. He shoots and a tremendous save by Hardwick in front of Newsom, who was only two yards in front of the goal, went for the header. But Hardwick, of course, able to use his hands and just pull it off of John's head practically to stop the goal. So Hardwick will just kick it back up as everybody funnels back toward the mid part of the field. And Hardwick puts up a line drive rising kick. Nover goes way up looking for a header, but it gets by him. Detroit brings it up. Bradford on the right side. Leads a pass, and Detroit definitely offside, no question. Oh, was substantially off in the right wing, and so the Sockers will bring it back up. But 14.30 is all that remains. Yeah, the Detroit build-up, Joe, is very, very quick here. They move the ball very smart, whereas San Diego are very lethargic. Lith they hold the ball in midfield instead of moving the ball much, much quicker. Doug Wark in the middle, gets it over to Ingram. Ingram right at the halfway line. Soccer's highly respected team in the NASL, 4-0 on the year, but nobody wins forever, and that may happen to the Soccer's if they don't do something dramatic in the last 14 minutes. Harshani outside the 35-yard line, left wing side goes into Woolrich, and we have a foul here against Detroit again, and it looks like it's Calhoun again. No, I think he's pulled nope. offside, Joe. Uh, the ball was played to the left wing, Nobody appeared that it could possibly be offside on that play, George. Well, it could be offside, you know, theoretically, but when the ball is switched a different direction and the play's 25, 30 yards away, then you wonder if it was it a good call by the yeah. referee. 13.40 remaining. Soccer's home Wednesday night to Houston, Saturday night to Portland. 2-8-0 goal. 
Give them a call, though, at the phones right now for ticket information. Soccer Clinic, 6-15 Wednesday night. All those uh, soccer books going to be given away. Tune you in on this sport. And we'll do what we can on the telecast. And come on out. What you ought to do is come on out to the games and listen to the, the uh, description. Uh, the PA announcer is very, very uh, good job at the home games of explaining why a particular call is made and what the goal kicks and corner kicks and all during the season. Uh, George and I will do what we can in that aspect of the game, too. It's a very, very simple sport to learn. Once you get it down, you can have a lot of fun watching it. Now the ball goes up into the stands, but unlike uh, baseball, they're going to have to give it back. And so they throw it back out on the field. 12.55, clock continues to run, and every second ticks away against San Diego. Now a delay here at the, the moment while the referee finally uh, gets it going again and gives the ball to Moffitt. Moffitt for Detroit. Long pass up the right wing. Newsom tackling the ball there, but he... Uh, Seemed to grab hold, or was grabbed by uh, Graham Oates, and they call it, and so quickly, an indirect backup by San Diego. Harshani, Harshani, a through pass to Ingram. Ingram, a chest trap, trying to dribble the ball at midfield, looking for some room, as Vanderveen instead sends it way over to the right side to Lakerman. Lakerman across the halfway line. Now back to Wark. Wark has it there, feeds it in, tries a through pass, broken up. Bradford seems to be everywhere, George. He has really played a superb game. Well, they call him the mighty atom, and you can see why here today. He's just been all over this field. Played very, very well. Steve Hardwick, goalkeeper for the Detroit Express, with under 12 minutes to go. Soccer's down, two to nothing. Right side to Moffat. Angus Moffat up the right wing. Moffat leads a pass up to Earl, stolen away by Vanderveen. The soccer's tremendous offense, which led the league in goals coming into this game, has been neutralized substantially by Detroit today. They've done a superb job on this squad. Now a long centering pass. Nover trying the header, but he missed it. But quickly, Mayer gets it out to Dougie on the left side. Work quickly up the left wing. Brings it across the halfway line. Being picked up there by Hunter, but a long kick, and it's taken by the goalkeeper. Hardwick will bring it back out. Simulcast on Kogo Radio and XCTV. And our next telecast will be from Seattle, by the way, coming up in June, June the 14th, from Seattle, from the Kingdom. Now the ball controlled by Moffat. Moffat at the halfway line, drops it back even deeper. Now they lead a pass up the right side, controlled by Oates. Oates over to Earl. Earl goes around, Wark goes into the corner of the penalty area, going in toward the arc, tries to drop a pass, but it comes out instead to Vanderveen. Soccer's come up four on four. On the right wing, a pass to Anderson. Anderson's got a man to beat in front of him, Ian Davis. Brings it into the middle, still in control. Anderson, open man, Wilrich. He's got lots of room, and he goes for the left foot. Dribbles it in closer, he shoots, save, and the rebound picked off by Hardway. One of the best opportunities in a long time for San Diego as Wilrich got free, but he could not get it past the goalkeeper, Hardwick. Wilrich was free on the left wing side as he was just at the corner of the goal area on the left wing, did a great job of dribbling around a defender, took the right head, right foot in-step kick, and Hardwick made the save. He lost the ball, fell right back on it, and made the stop, and so no goal with only 10.15 to go. So Detroit will send the ball back upfield, and the pressure is really on San Diego now. They're going to have to forget about defense and start worrying strictly about offense. Up the right wing side, coming up quickly, the Sockers in control on the right side. Trying to bring it in deep at the goal line, and it goes out across the goal line, forced out by Neumann. So uh, now they're going to say the Detroit player touched it last, so we'll get a corner kick from San Diego. And, of course, every, every goal scored here gets San Diego a point. There's six points for a win, and for every goal up into a maximum of three, they get three points. It's a good point. Even if you don't win the game, you want to get something on the scoreboard. Newsom with a header. Puts it out in front, but it comes back out, and a good kick. Good over... Out to the halfway mark taken by Lakerman. Lakerman back up the right wing side. And the Sockers now with 9.20 to go. A lead pass. Looking for Ingram, but it's blocked away again by Paul Hunter. Ball at midfield. Sockers have it there, trailing 2 to nothing. Now brought back up by Vanderveen. Vanderveen starts to move it toward the right wing. Controlled by San Diego, but San Diego is running out of time. Will Rich. Woolrich outside the 35-yard line, right down the middle, about 40 yards out. Starts to move around Keith Furphy. Takes a great shot, and oh, a fine save again by Steve Hardwick, who just got a hand on it to block it away. And we'll have a corner kick, though, by San Diego from the left wing side. So a critical opportunity here with 8.45 remaining. Doug Wark is going to take it. Wark going to kick it with his left foot. 
puts it in. Goes high, too far really, and Newsom falling down, couldn't get there. Neumann has to race back for the ball, tries to hold it in right at the touchline of the far side of the field. Neumann dropping back deeper, gives it to Vanderveen. Vanderveen all the way back to the halfway line, sends it over to Lakerman. Lakerman in the middle, tries a long volley, a header taken by Anderson, blocked away and kicked back out by Calhoun with 8.15 to go. Soccer's trailing two to nothing. Now up the left wing side, Earl, and he's got a man in the middle, Graham Oates. Going in deep is Earl. Earl starts to move on Nover, tries to go around him. He puts up a shot, and it's across the goal line. So with 7.59 to go, we'll pause. Detroit leads it 2 to nothing. against to try to get at least a goal out of this one trailing two to nothing the only goal by Detroit was by Furphy and unfortunately Peter Nover on a defensive play uh, put one in the net also that counts in Detroit's tally of course when it went by Alan Mayer but unlike, for example, hockey, where the nearest player would get credit for a goal put in by a defender in that sport, in soccer, nobody gets credit for it. It just goes into the team records, two to nothing. And it's down to four minutes exactly to play. Now a throw in by Newsom, quickly up the left wing to Woolrich. And we get a foul call against uh, Detroit. But again, as uh, George says, it slows things down. It cuts the pace of the game. It gives Detroit a chance to uh, regroup and to get back uh, back defensively, and that's all they want to do now with 3.40 to go. Yes, it's a pity they hadn't taken Muffet from uh, Dumbarton out earlier. <laughs> he's led the uh, Soccer's a Merry Chase today, and of course Danny Vaughn from uh, Washington area, he's in the game now. Again, the other scores today, New York beat Dallas 3-1, to one, Vancouver over Colorado 1-0, and in a shootout, Washington 1, Minnesota nothing. Up the right wing side, Lakerman. Lakerman just outside the 35-yard line. Back to Vanderveen. Vanderveen up the right wing. Work falls down trying to get the ball. Can't control it. Ingram looking for a pass, but he's ridden off or can't get to it, and Detroit picks it up. Detroit in control of the ball, bringing it back up the left wing side, Davis. Davis leads it up to Danny Vaughn. Vaughn racing Newsom. Newsom heads it out. It goes across the touch line, and Detroit takes their time, bringing it back in. We're down to three minutes to go. So the soccer is on the edge of having their four-game win streak stopped here, and it'll leave uh, very few undefeated teams in the league right now. Washington is undefeated. New York is undefeated. And Dallas, of course, lost today. So uh, there are only two undefeated teams remaining in the North American Soccer League. The Cosmos, as I guess everybody kind of figured they might be, but they're certainly not invincible. And Washington remains undefeated. So the ball comes out for the Sockers up the left wing side. Wark trying to get it stolen away. Nice play by Detroit. Feed into the middle to Furphy. Furphy just outside the penalty area. A pass over to the right wing side. And they call offside, offside against Detroit with only 2.20 to go. A couple of big uh, scores uh, internationally. This is a World Cup year, Joe. Uh, Brazil and England tied 1-1 one one in London. And West Germany, the world champions, lost in Sweden 3-1 against the Swedish national team. So that was a big surprise. Moffat, by the way, twisted his knee. That's why he's been replaced for Detroit. They've had a lot of injuries, but all of those guys that were supposedly hurt are all playing today. And Detroit has uh, put on an impressive show here at the home home field. Now Vaughn with a shot, and Miller dropped the ball! And finally gets it back. It was a spinner. It had a lot of English on it and almost skidded away from Allen. But he caught up with it and made the save. Now with 1.42 to go, Vanderveen up the right wing side. Leads it up to Wilrich. Wilrich trying to find a hole in the seam of the defense, bringing it up the middle. Good move as he turns around with the ball, dribbles it up the left wing into Wark. Wark can't reach it. He's taken off the ball, tackled away, and up the right side it comes to Furphy. Furphy's got the only goal that they've needed all day. He scored the first one up the right side to Vaughn. Vaughn's got an open man on the left wing. Lakerman, though, with a header, blocks it away. Comes back over to the near side to Newsom, and we're down to 1.15 to play. Newsom brings it up the left wing. Getting it toward the halfway line. Still has possession. Feeds it up further and tries a through pass, but it's intercepted by Detroit, and Detroit has just about got this one wrapped up now. Ian Davies, right side, over to Vaughn. Soccer's back up. Three men in front of Alan Mayer at the goal is working the near post. They try to center it, but it's blocked across the goal line. Mayer wants to keep the play going and just keep it moving, but they're calling a corner kick for Detroit instead. 
and they've got just 45 seconds to going three and one on the year. San Diego waited there, Joe, by the way. They waited an offside call. It did look offside from here. However, the linesman was right up with the play and allowed play to go on. This will put Detroit in first place in their division, by the way, in the Central Division. A ball from Nover as it came from the corner from, from Detroit, and Nover forced it back across the goal line. But this game is wrapped up now with 20 seconds to go. Time running out on San Diego, who will now drop to a 4-1 and one record, but remain in first place. And uh, let's see if they can hold first place this week when Houston and Portland come in on Wednesday and Saturday. One more time, that phone number, 280-GOAL. Clock running down, the game is over. The Detroit Express, in their second home game of the year, beats San Diego by a score of 2 to nothing. Keith Murphy scoring the winning goal for the second time this year for the Detroit Express. And so the Sockers go down to defeat 2 to nothing. We'll be back with a final word right after this. We are going to be on camera? Well, how long do you want us to go? <coughs> Hello? Yeah, okay. Okay, just uh, tell me in the headset when you want me to uh, to wrap it up, okay? All these wires running to get killed here, yeah. Do I have to read this billboard again? Okay. All right, well then get me off camera when you do it. <laughs> and Coca-Cola. Joe Starkey back in uh, Pontiac, Michigan with George Logan and the final score here this afternoon. The Sockers lose it by a score of uh, two to nothing. And George, uh, uh, it's, it was a funny game because the Sockers who've been so aggressive offensively all season long were never really into it in that category of the game today. Detroit really shut them down. Yeah, it seemed as if they had read San Diego's script here and uh, they, they were completely aggressive in the first half and completely dominated San Diego in the second half. They never allowed San Diego to settle at all and the game was really won and lost in midfield. Uh, Muffet played an outstanding game. Uh, the other midfielder played beautiful soccer and, you know, two small men, one five foot five, the other one five foot seven, completely dominated this game. How do you think the, uh, the decision uh, by Hubert Vogelsinger to switch lineups uh, had in this game? Do you think that the fact that he'd moved some people around that had been playing forward and, and switched Vanderveen, for example, and then moved uh, Anderson back in the middle, do you think that was uh, uh, had anything to do with this? No, I don't think so. You know, coaches will go over the strengths and the weaknesses of the other team, and they had uh, uh, watched this team before, and they thought they would play on certain weaknesses. I think it was just a case, really, of uh, the Sockers didn't play too well today, and the Detroit played very, very well. Well, it's, uh, it still keeps the Sockers in first place, so they've got 33 points on the season. California is right behind them, though, now with 30. Both teams have four and one records, but the Sockers have a big edge coming now because they've got a five-game homestand beginning. Uh, four games that uh, count. They've got the exhibition game, of course, against Dusseldorf. But now, just to maybe a quick look at Houston. What kind of a team is Houston, George? Houston are a very, very fine team. Uh, they have a number of young American players coming through. Uh, and, of course, they have the old head, Bobby Lennox. Bobby played for the Scottish national team. He played for the great Celtic team that won the uh, European Cup back in 67. And he's been the real father, the general, the quarterback of this team, playing very, very well. And uh, I think you're going to see a really good team come in against the soccer. So they'll have to be back on their usual form to beat Houston on Wednesday night. Okay, and don't forget, Portland's in on Saturday night, and another feature of the Wednesday night game, of course, though, is the uh, the fact of the soccer clinic that starts at 6.15, the Steve Bishop soccer clinic, as they're calling it, and they're going to give away soccer guidebooks, uh, have a real uh, a good session to uh, tune you in on the sport and explain to you what this game is all about. Then on Saturday night, the Portland Timbers will come in for a rematch of that great 
game that was played last Saturday night. And of course, the Sox going to be given away at the uh, Wednesday game as well. And by the way, just before we sign off, if you want to now that the game's over, make a quick call to the San Diego office and get some information about San Diego soccer tickets. Give them a call. 280 Goal is the number to call. 280 Goal. They're still standing by, and we hope to see you out there as often as possible in the rest of the season. It's going to be a good year. Soccer still in first place. A fun game. We're sorry we didn't have better result for you here this afternoon. But that again is the final score. The soccer's losing today, Detroit, by a score of two to nine.